So I'd like to tell you about ellipses. Section 6.3 is the second type of conic sections, the ellipse. And we talked about them a little bit last week, how you have these points in an ellipse called foci or focus points that are similar to the focus point in a parabola in that they're inside the shape. And then an ellipse has two points each called the vertex. So if you have more than one vertex, those are called vertices. So an ellipse is made by finding all the points where the distance from the point on the ellipse to focus one plus the distance on the ellipse to focus two is some constant number, and that will draw an ellipse. The line that goes through vertex one, focus one, center, focus two, vertex two, that's called the major axis. And then we have another line of symmetry called the minor axis that goes through the smaller direction of the ellipse. The point in the middle of the ellipse is called the center, and that's going to be an important point to us. <coughs> so here is how we're going to analyze an ellipse that has its center at the origin. So these are the simplest ones. So notice all the symmetry that's going on. We have symmetry with respect to the x-axis and to the y-axis. So here is what the equation looks like. x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. So when I draw these graphs, I look under the x squared term, and I see this number a squared. So I need that to go plus or minus a in the x direction, and that's going to get me to these two vertices. And then under the y term, I see b squared, and that's going to get me my two points 0b and 0 negative b, and those are going to help me to draw the ellipse. So this first kind of ellipse has the number under the x squared term is bigger. So it's bigger in the horizontal direction. And we're going to look at a problem where we're being asked to find the vertices and foci of each ellipse. So let me first clean my workspace. With my magic eraser. OK. So now I'm looking under the x squared term, and I see the number 9, which is a perfect square. So I know I need to go plus or minus 3 in the x direction. So I'm going to go plus 3 in the x direction and minus 3 in the x direction. And then under the y squared term, I see 4. So I need to go plus or minus 2 in the y direction. And these are kind of my guiding points for my ellipse now. So then I know the center's at the origin, and I can draw my ellipse. And do your best to make it symmetric. It's really hard with this stylus on the tablet, but you can do better with paper and pencil. So the next example is to show you that if you don't have equals 1 on the right-hand side, you have to put the equals 1 by dividing by whatever you have here. So you need to divide both sides by 18 in this case. So then you'll have x squared over 18 plus y squared over 2 equals 1. So now you're going to look under the x squared term and say, oh, this is going to be a pain in the neck. I have to go square root of 18. So that's 3 root 2. So I'm going to go 3 root 2 in the x direction. So this is 3 root 2 and negative 3 root 2 in the x direction. And then in the y direction, I need to go plus or minus square root of 2. And then I can draw my ellipse. So I draw the pictures first, and then I find all the information they're asking me about. So vertices, they're only the long direction, remember. So for this ellipse, it's 3 root 2, 0 and negative 3 root 2, 0. Those are the vertices. Then it asks us to find the foci. Well, there's a really cool relationship. Go back to the theorem. Oh, they write it this way, as b squared equals a squared minus c squared. 
I think that's kind of confusing. So I write it as c squared equals a squared minus b squared, which if you do a little algebra, you'll see that's the same thing. And the c, you'll see, is the coordinate of the focus point. So it's the difference. It looks kind of like the Pythagorean theorem, but it has a difference in there, a minus. So it's the denominator under the x squared minus the denominator under the y squared term is c squared. So if I'm looking at number 18, I would say c squared equals 9 minus 4, which is 5. So c is plus or minus square root of 5. So I could put that point on my ellipse and say, oh, one of my focus points is square root of 5, 0. And the other one has to be symmetric. So negative square root of 5, 0. And those are my two focus points. So usually either the vertices are nice and the focus points are, are some crazy radical or the vertices are crazy radicals and the focus points are nice. So notice for this second e exercise, I'll have c squared is the difference of the denominators. So c squared is 16, c is plus or minus 4. So these focus points are a lot easier to find. So this is a focus and this is a focus. So the focus points are 4, 0, and negative 4, 0. So again, we have, uh, for the remainder of the section, what analyze means. So for an ellipse, you need to find the center, the major axis, two focus points, and two vertices, and then graph the ellipse. Okay, so if the ellipse is longer in the y direction, you're going to see that the number under the y squared term is bigger, and that's really the only thing that's different. Everything else is the same. The focus points are still going to be the difference of the denominators, square root of that, away from the center. So let's look at one of this type where, again, I don't have a 1 on the right-hand side, so I have to get the 1 over there before I start analyzing. So I'll have y squared over 9 plus x squared over 4 equals 1. So regardless of the order of things, under the x squared term tells you how far to go in the x direction. So we can see in the x direction we're going to go 2 and negative 2, because we have a 4 under the x squared. And I have a 9 under the y squared, so that says go 3 in the positive y direction, 3 in the negative y direction, and I can draw my ellipse. So then if I'm asked for the vertices, remember they're the farthest away points. So the vertex 1 is going to be 0, 3, and the other vertex will be 0, negative 3. So the point 2, 0 now is, doesn't have a name even. It's not important. It just helps us draw the ellipse, but it doesn't have any significance like the vertex is the farthest point away from the center. So those other points don't really have special names. Some people call them a co-vertex, but you're not going to hear that very often. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is the tricky problems. Oh, we need to find the focus points. So c squared, again, is the difference of the denominator. So subtract whichever way you get a positive number. Don't worry about which one's a and b. It's the difference of the denominators. That's the relationship. So c, in this case, is plus or minus root 5, which is a little more than 2. And the vertex is always in the same direction as the focus, so you know which way the focus points need to go and how far away they are from the center. So I have 0 root 5 and 0 negative root 5. So the first coordinate of the vertex and the focus points are all the same when the ellipse is this direction, and the second coordinates are all going to be the same when the ellipse is the other direction. So again, I'm re going to really encourage you to draw pictures for these problems. So here's a problem that says I have a vertex at 0, 8, and 0, negative 8. So there are my vertices. And then I have a focus at 0, negative 4. So here's my focus point. So I don't know how wide the ellipse is yet, but I do know that 
for this distance from the center to the focus has to be c. So c squared has to be equal 16. So I'm going to write what my equation looks like so far. I know it has to look like x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. Well, I can see that the number under the y squared term should be 8 squared, or 64. And then I know that the difference of the denominators needs to be 16. So it looks to me like that means the number under the x squared needs to be 48. See if you agree with me. So now I know that in the x direction, I need to go plus or minus square root of 48, but I'm pretty sure that has a 16 in there. So that's plus or minus 4 root 3. So I need to go about a little more than 4 in the x direction and draw my ellipse. And we're also supposed to find the equation for the ellipse. So here is the equation for the ellipse. Okay, and then the next part we're going to do is when the center has different coordinates, but I'm going to make a separate video for that because I have a limit of 15 minutes on each. So do the homework for that part, and then we'll come back and talk about what about when I move the center.